Hi guys, I'm Ryan Newsman and welcome to my flight hunting channel. If you haven't already done so, consider hitting the subscribe button down below. Uh, that'll keep you up to date with everything as I upload it. Uh, my channel already contains hundreds of videos covering a wide range of both patterns and techniques from the basic to the more advanced. Uh, so without delay, let's get on with the show. Hi okay, guys, so we're going to tie a pike fly tonight but want a little bit of a difference. Uh, this one is going to use glow in the dark materials. So, uh, first things first, I'm going to use uh, one of these. This is a 6 0 Sakuma Manta. Not a Sakuma Manta, it's a Sakuma 470 Top Gun, which is a nice, short, strong, sharp hook. And I'm going to use uh, Gel Spun. So, we're going to add on our thread. The fly is generally white, so don't worry too much about neatness of the thread. Then we're going to add a bit of super glue to the shank there, and then wrap through that super glue back and forward just to get our tie in thread adhering to the shank so that the materials are unlikely to slip. So I'm going to use a bit of uh, like a lure flash flashaboo here. This is a silver. I'm going to pull out what, maybe a dozen or so, maybe a little bit more fibers of that. I'm going to, so now we have the bunch that's what, 20 centimeters or so. So if I take the middle of the bunch here and I pull some of it out past, so half the fibers maybe, maybe an inch past, and then that bunch that we pull a little bit longer, take a few out of it and pull them out maybe another inch and then that'll give us this sort of tapered tail end shape to the fly. So I'm going to tie that in about maybe 60% of its length. There. And that will become the core of the tail. So next I'm going to take a bucktail, a white bucktail. And I'm going to take a bunch of that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it down with the tips pointing this way. And I'm going to let it envelop around the hook and then tighten into it. You can see it's starting to splay out a little bit there. Now I'm leaving these bits on because they'll help to support the tail. I'll super glue my thread and just wrap into that and then I'm going to fold all of this here back. So as you can see, the bits of the flash of that we left out the front are now uh, sort of supported and splayed out by the bucktail skirt. So that has already given us sort of like a like a bait fish profile. So what we're going to use now is a glow in the dark pike fiber. So if I take a bunch of that and then I just misalign the tips so that I've got my tapered bunch. And you've seen me do this plenty of times with uh, 
predator fibers of this sort before. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie that in again, maybe about 60% along its length. Allow it to display around, as you can see it's sort of creating this sort of bulk to the front of the fly. Super glue my thread here. Wrap the center, splay this out so that it's evenly distributed around the hook, and then just fold that back. thread through. As you can see the super glue has sort of helped it to conform to the sort of bait fish shape uh, and then it just depends how much splayed you want it as to whether you leave it like that or not. So I'm now just going to pull all that back. I'm going to take my super glue and just glue this sort of bended portion here and that will help that to sit. If I want it to be quite flat to get eyes to stick to it what I'll do is I'll sort of squeeze this here until it sets and then instead we get sort of like that flat profile here so the eyes will sit handy on this uh, and how deep you want the fly then depends on how much you sort of compress these down before it sets on itself. So a simple, really simple tie. Uh, so we're going to add eyes and a, and a gluing head to this thing now. So as you've seen before super glue can react with stuff so we'll set that aside and we'll take one that we've already done. So I'm going to take uh, a two part epoxy to do this and um, as per usual I'm using like a post-it pad block and a toothpick. Take a toothpick. Put out a bit of each of our two epoxies. And then I'm going to mix this together. You mix it and mix it and mix it on the little pad here. And the handy thing with the pad is that you know you just rip it off the top sheet and throw it away, and it doesn't leave a mess behind it. So once it's mixed, then I take a glob of it on my little cocktail stick here, and. Place a little bit on this side and a little bit on the other side. Now I'm just going to use the cocktail stick just to dig it in through the materials. Gives us a good solid base for our eyes to stick to. And then I'm going to use uh, these sort of I suppose chartreuse eyes. Um, but if you really wanted to, to go whole hog with the uh, glow in the dark, you could use a, a glow in the dark eye as well. So I'm just going to catch a little lip of my epoxy with the back of the eye on both sides. And then I'll set that aside to dry. Now, you can clamp it in place if you want. Once it's in place, just push the eye into the position you want and then set that aside somewhere to dry. So 
So now we're going to put on the glow-in-the-dark head. So we're going to take one that we had already done from before. So we're at this stage where the eyes themselves are fixed on. Now if there's any fibres that are sort of sticking out, it's time to tidy them up now because otherwise they'll stick out of your epoxy head. So I'd say take a clamp and clamp back all of the materials. And then we're going to mix up uh, our epoxy here with some glowing pigment. I'm just shaking some of that into my epoxy. And then I'm just going to mix it in. Now it, it turns like a milky white sort of colour, but when you charge it up in the dark or with the light and then take it into the dark, it, it'll glow. Uh, well, this one's actually like a like a chartreuse sort of a glow. So I'm just allowing that to settle between the eyes on the top and the same then down below. I'm filling up the gap between the eyes. I'm just going to take that and join the top and bottom to make it nice and secure. And then we need to take that and put it on uh, a rotary fly dryer. So this will give us a, a green, essentially glow head. But uh, if you want to be a little bit fancier as well, what you do is you take, uh, this is actually a red glow pigment here. And I'm going to take a little bit of my epoxy. I'm just going to dip that in off the end of the cocktail stick into that pigment. It'll just coat the blob and no more. And then if I take that and just apply that underneath here. The red is not as uh, pure a pigment. I find that it doesn't glow to the same extent as the greens do. In fact none of them do. There's, there's all manner of different colours for sale, but uh, to be honest, the green is the best, followed probably by a blue, but the rest have just got sort of like, I think they basically are this, but then they just add other ones to it just to, like pigments, normal pigments rather than actual glow pigments to give them. So, as I said, it doesn't look like much as it stands out at the minute. Um, but what we'll do is if we take, this is a UV pen. Now I'm not curing the, the epoxy here. I'm actually just charging the light and hopefully when I turn the light off you'll see it. The camera may not be uh, sensitive enough but hopefully you'll see this glow in the dark when I turn the light off. And the red is just about visible under there, but if you charge the fly up with uh, with light, you can see him glow in the dark. Turn the light back on. So I'll we'll set that aside to dry on a rotary dryer and then that will give us a nice smooth
finish to the head, hopefully. So, um, hopefully you like what you see. I think the idea of that is that it may give you a little bit more visibility to the fly in low light conditions, maybe murky water, maybe at dark. I suppose we don't have Xander over here, but I've had a few people suggest that uh, they may work well for Xander. And uh, I've also downsized them with that sort of thing in mind. So we've got these little mini versions of it here. So if you like what you see, give us a like, subscribe, tell your friends. And until next time, tight lines. And thanks for watching.